18 from Kamaya Small, 17 from Lexi Barrier, and 11 from Jackie Benitez. Benitez was not available for the Maryland game. Now, not available for the Dukes today is Maddie Green. She is on the bench in sweats as uh, she injured herself apparently in that Maryland game. We did know she went down a couple of times, but it's good to have Jackie Benitez, so a switch as it is. And they go down low looking for a turnover for the Dukes to start things off here in this ball game. Coach O'Regan a little concerned, even though they won this game a year ago. In fact, Hoppy only had four points in that game with the size of this team because they, they're basically running five guards out on the floor, so the Dukes are concerned with keeping up with them. There's a contest by Alston in rebound. It's Kamaya Smalls for James Madison. She'll go all the way down, stops at the block, takes the jump shot, can't will bounce, and the rebound comes out. Top of the circle, KB takes it. No barrier. Lexi got off to a real good start against Maryland. And here goes Smalls. She'll take the jumper 0 for Taya. And another rebound for KB, who averages six boards per contest, to go along with 10 rebounds. Bailey here on the right wing, a sophomore from Long Beach, New York. And running the point, it is England. England to Hoppy. Hoppy will drive, tries to scoop it up, comes up shy, and Jeff for some contact. She got contact, just didn't get the call. Here is Smalls. Smalls finally gets it to the rim, and the Dukes are on the board. And we always know Kamaya Smalls is never afraid to drive to the paint when needed. Shooting at 46% coming in. That's her 22nd field goal. 22 out of 49 to the moment. So just a shade over 44%. You'll take that from Kamaya Smalls, who can put up quite a few shots, quite obviously. And that's exactly what the Dukes wanted to do. Shot clock down to eight. We got a travel on Austin, first turnover against the Red Storm. Red Storm out of the Big East. The Dukes already have one victory against the Big East team, and that is Villanova on the road a week ago yesterday. There's Coach Joe. Again, he uh, roamed this campus at the turn of the century. We love alum. Yes, we do. Back yesterday, a lot of letter winner alums back yesterday. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to see many of them as we were busy with yesterday's football production and congratulations to the football Duke CA champions outright count that bucket thought they had stopped the play and that is a basket for Lexi Barrier a two-pointer and the foul was on Alyssa Austin her first teams first and it was away from the basketball so it didn't really influence the scoring so it provides the Dukes with an actually a better opportunity an easy basket, the ball back. Here is Jefferson. Jefferson takes the crazy shot, but she gore it. Kiki Jefferson. Here at home, she's had two very good games. She was 0 for 6 in the game at Villanova, but averaging 16 and a half points here at the combo and eight rebounds here at the combo. I hope she's okay with us moving to the Atlantic Union next year. I'm sure she'll fit in just well. <laughs> Here's Barrier, flips it up, gets it to tumble in, and the Red Storm wants to take a timeout as the Dukes off and running, much like they were against Maryland. A little slower start, but still a good one nonetheless. Slower. As we get back underway here at the JMU Convocation Center, only 13 games remain here at this facility for the JMU women's and men's program for that matter. Here's KB gets to the back drag and thus a turnover for the Dukes. That is their second. In the, the CAA championship in men's soccer this afternoon, they are scoreless after one half of play down in Wilmington. JMU the number two seed, Wilmington the number one. Here's Hoppy on the drive, and it's back-to-back -back by the Red Storm. Hoppy on the board. Averages 17.5 uh, points, shoots at 43%. Here's Barrier, gets some contact, comes up a little shy, taps it out. But in of Hoppy. They'll back it out. That's hard off the back of the irons. Hit the square, I should say, and a quick 6-0 burst. So the Dukes have really been taking advantage of the right side of the post here. They've seemed to be driving down to the paint and realizing if we don't make it, Caleb Cooper-Williams, it should be right there. 
And they try to get it inside to Smalls. They do, but Kamaya cut off. And Jefferson kept her footing, and she has plowed into the foul, hard foul by Alicia Kaby. That is her first. And that should send Jefferson to the free throw line. A sub is scheduled to come in for the Dukes. And here is the drive by the freshman from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Well, Alicia Kaby may be under six foot, but her vertical definitely wasn't getting up against Jefferson. She did get up there. You're right, Jefferson. Seven, uh, six out of eight at the free throw line this season. Hits another. Sort of a quiet crowd here this evening as uh, I think a lot of people are worn out from yesterday. Well, you, when you have crossover, you have soccer today, basketball today, and football yesterday, it gets a little overwhelming. And there were people outside in the cold yesterday at the football game. Many of them have come here today, and you can kind of feel like they're a little bit drained, but they're delighted to be here. Let's pump some energy into them. Duke's leading at 10 to 6. Some pressure applied by James Madison. Here to the left wing, Hoppy alone for the three-pointer. She gets it. Devin AMU, as Hoppy has already scored more in this game today than she did all of last year's meeting. And that is Devin Merritt. Merritt down low and finds a wide open. Cooper Williams for the bucket. Kayla averaging six points, nearly nine rebounds a game. This is where Kayla Cooper should really come into play with her height, knowing that St. John started all five guards. And now there's the quickness and the lower angle for St. John's to get to the basketball. The tall Cooper Williams couldn't get to it quick enough. Instead, the quickness of St. John's prevails on that possession. Here is Alston. And the Countdown, and that is splash down, and good here is Hoppy. Yeah, you do not want Hoppy to heat up, or it's going to be a long day for the Dukes. She has hit two three-pointers, came in, so she at the moment is 8 for 13 on trays this year. That ought to tell you something. And that ties us up at 12. Dukes trying to reclaim the lead here, dropping it down low. Cooper Williams is blocked, gets it back, goes to the opposite block, and we get a three-second on the Dukes. That was a fast three seconds. Absolutely. All right, coming back in, Jackie Benitez. Here's the block. And they do get the call favorably, does St. John's. On the drive, England scoops it up. Rebound, Cooper Williams. They like to harass on those rebounds and a turn of the change in the passing lane for Smalls creates the contact. England call for the foul. That is her first. Devin Merritt will come over here, and she'll trigger in for the Dukes. Again, out of the Big East, St. John's out of New York. Here's Benitez, a three-point threat. She can also drive. Cooper Williams, one-on-one. -on -one. Cooper Williams backs it in. Fadeaway shot. And the redshirt senior inspires. KB grabs the floorboard. Picked off. Just like an Adam Smith interception. He didn't get one yesterday. That broke his string. I just thought about that. So close, though. He had uh, four in a row. Four games in a row. Cooper Williams battles down below at the block. Rolls off the rim. Tapped out. Back of Nidez. Dukes get a new 20-second shot clock. The Dukes have not taken a slow space yet. They've really been just been driving on everything. Rebound comes out to Unique Drake, a freshman out of Columbia, South Carolina, who checked in last stoppage of play. A 12-12 contest. Both teams have sent substitutes to the scoring table. England, a redshirt junior from Stanford, Connecticut, Stanford High School. There's the shot, and it rattles in. Lalani Correa, a freshman from Manchester, New Jersey, Manchester Township. And she averages 13 points a game. That's her 12th field goal of the season on 19 tries. Benitez. Off balance shot, but she'll score the EMU. I think she wins creativity points for shots so far. Benitez, who played at Siena to start her, her career and then came to James Madison after that. 
good three-point shooter, but also known for her defensive prowess. She's been honored as such many times. Benitez, here's the ball rip. Down to this baseline, Hoppy. Smalls, that should come up short. It does just a bit. Benitez rips it away. And Hoppy reaching in, no contact. Smalls will dribble it on up. 147 to go, opening stanza. Switching the ball with the height, laid it in, does Kamaya Smalls. She's got four, and the Dukes retake the lead at 16-14. That play did stun St. John's defense a little bit. Didn't know how to react to it. Had a little uh, Allen Iverson in her there, does the <laughs> Philadelphia product, and she wears number three because she grew up a fan of AI, who is actually a Virginia native, and the Cooper Williams, and we say that quite often. Doing what she does best. Smalls steps back. A little too strong. I'd be curious to see Cooper Williams at the volleyball net along with uh, Michaela, Michaela White. White. Oh How about goodness. that combination? I would pay money to see that combination. By, by the way, the Volleyball Dukes did win today in four at Feastern, so they, they already had clinched the number two seed, but they pick up their 19th win going into the CA tournament next week. They'll have a quarterfinal round by. Benitez alone, right side, off the iron. Rebound, Jefferson tries to glide it in, and nice move. The senior out of Pennsylvania as well, and that is, of course, Devin Merritt out of Reading, PA. She has her first bucket, gives the Dukes a four-point advantage. Dukes jumped out to the 8-0 lead. Timeout St. John's, they score six quick. And it's been tied and the lead has changed a couple of times since then. Hoppy in the keyhole, gets Benitez soaring to rebound for Jefferson. Four seconds on the clock, Jefferson gets the screen. She'll take the shot on the move, Ooh. and no, off the front of the iron. One of these days, one of those is gonna go in. <laughs> Too bad it didn't happen on Wednesday, or the Dukes, they would be three and oh. And the Dukes do lead it 18-14 against the St. John's Red Storm. We'll be back in a moment. You're watching James. I left mine somewhere. A good umbrella, yes. absolutely. So that, that might be what I get this time. My grandson, he was uh, the recipient of a new new uh, jumper the other day, because nice. last week from two weeks ago. So I might have to stack. It's perfect. Good Yesterday's idea. Yesterday's any indication of what winter is coming. <laughs> well, you'll be outside for some December games, we hope, at uh, Bridgeport Stadium, of course. Oh, yes. The JMU Sprint Broadcast Network. Duke's leading it 18-14 uh, as we get underway in the second quarter of play. And they are underway down in Wilmington in the second half of that men's soccer championship. And a tall rebound down. That is Emma Nolan, a freshman from Valparaiso, Indiana. And count the bucket and the foul goes against JMU. The basket scored by Drake. And the foul is on Kiki Jefferson. That's her first team foul, number one. The drive by Drake. And so you have Nolan out there, averages two points per game. Off the front of the Jalen Caradine. Caradine got the rebound. Alley goes to Benitez. Here's Jefferson, baseline, tried to get it inside. Rain Tucker, a 6'1 freshman from New Carrollton, Maryland. And a foul on Lexi Barrier, trying to permit the easy layup. See the Red Storm is coming in and driving a little more as their points came before the first half, all from the arc. 18-16 as there's some outside shooting there in that first 10 minutes of the contest. And off the mark on the free throw. It's a team that uh, shooting 75% this year from the field, 47 from the three-point range, 33. That's dropped in by Bailey. One out of two. And Hoppy comes back in for the Red Storm. 5-7, 3.5 rebounds, two assists, so a very complete player. Here is Barrier all the way. She'll draw contact as she got right down the middle of the lane. Foul is called on Hoppy. Just stepped back in with eight points in the ball game. Picks up her first foul. 
Maybe Joe over to the bookstore so he can get a JMU tie before he heads back to St. John's. I think that would be awesome. <laughs> that should be the wager for every time they meet. <laughs> That's right. Free throw for Lex. There's a Coach O'Regan. Here's Barrier. And she switched time. Six for the senior. The senior class, I think uh, after today, my math is somewhat close. There's a foul on Benitez with a high risk out top. Uh, this, this senior class should have about 500 games under its belt after today. I just got tired from hearing that number. Oh my goodness. Foul is on Benitez. Her first team foul number three here in the second period. Out of the lineup goes Nolan. As KB comes back in. KB out of Philadelphia, PA. And she is, and Kamaya Smalls from the same program. Crossover for Korea. Pass knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Nikki Oppenheimer, who slipped into the lineup. Didn't see that. The Nikki 5 9 redshirt sophomore. Let's go, let's go. Sat out as a redshirt last year after transferring from Sarah. Point shooter. Great three point shooter. Uh, you're right, yes. Well, her dad is a shot doctor who coaches for the JMU men, Josh Oppenheimer. And Hoppy, long range shot, crashing the boards, and we get a jump ball. Possession arrow favors JMU. I was uh, walking around. Uh, again, walk, talking to people, and her, mo her mother, Adrian, was walking with uh, another woman. I said, y'all have to be sisters. Are you twins? And they are. They are. Yes, they are twins. They played volleyball at Northern Arizona where Josh, uh, Nikki's father, played basketball. Very interesting. We had a good conversation that uh, about their sports and sports and family and basketball and all is that's the foul called on Caradine, her first, and that's a charge created, uh, called as a turnover as well. Yeah, that story goes uh, a little deeper. Tied to Oregon State, and basketball playing there. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They are around the country with their sports. And of course, uh, Josh uh, coaching in the NBA also, so mm -hmm. very well connected coast to coast. Here's England down into the corner, barrier defending on KB. And in the paint, Smalls coming up with it for JMU. She'll take it all the way down the floor, takes the jumper in the paint and hits it. Doesn't Out. seem like the Dukes have had time to run any kind of play. It's been a very fast-paced game. Well, they're just trying to quicken it up, and maybe the uh, St. John's Red Storm, by their favorable pace of quickness, maybe uh, getting the Dukes sped up just a little bit, too. That's a nice feed by Alston, and the, for Hoppy, who's in double figures, first player this afternoon to reach that particular point. 22-19, JMU with the lead. Here goes Smalls again. Kicks it out to Barrier. Tough pass, though, for Lexi to handle to shoot and three seconds um, I didn't see anybody in there I didn't either uh, maybe she saw somebody we didn't but it, they're saying, I, it, saying it was Devin yeah Devin Merritt maybe it was one 22 19 no can't camp out in there you got to be in and out in three seconds but there have been a couple of three seconds called already Baby, Hoppy here on the left wing. Top of the circle, it's Alston. She'll drive through the crowd and she'll score the basketball. Alston has her second field goal. She averages eight points a game. Out of New Haven, Connecticut, went to the Career Hill Magnet School. Oppenheimer, the three-point threat. Merritt. Barrier can hit the three. She can drive, she can try to dump it off. I thought that was touched by a Red Storm player, but it is out of bounds, off the Dukes. Well, it's not the first time the Dukes have drove and passed while they're in the paint instead of just going up and seeing where it lands. Korea back in for the Red Storm. Out of Jamaica, New York. Just as you get on Long Island.
Here's England, brings it across the timeline. No pressure for the Dukes. It's Nolan, back to England, right wing. Three-point try, that comes up shy, and the rebound, Katie puts it back up and in with quick. And the St. John's Red Storm on a run, leading at 23-22. And Smalls gets contact, she scores the basketball, and she'll go to the free throw line. Eight for Kamaya, who's an 87% free throw shooter, and she draws the contact. That's a big one, it's against Hoppy. Very nice, that's two on Hoppy, I believe. It is. Watch the drive here for Smalls, protects the basketball. Yeah, if Hoppy can get in some foul trouble before the half, that would give the Dukes a little bit of a break. Well, we'll see what does have the two fouls. They'll, they will bring her out of the lineup. Hits the free throw, she has nine, right on the heels of Hoppy with 10 for the game. Austin, circus shot, and she scores it late in the NBA. Maybe the WNBA. That's <laughs> probably better. Allen Iverson would be very impressed with these girls today. And Smalls on a hustle after losing the handle. Fortunate the Dukes get it back with 23 seconds on the shot clock as England the last to touch it for the Red Storm. Dukes led at the end of one period, 18-14, but St. John's has outscored the Dukes in this frame, the seven, We're about midway through this second quarter. Smalls, one-on-one, -on -one, gets in the paint, little hopper, no good, rebound off the floor. Smalls tries to reach in against Austin, and then Benita has got a hand on it. Austin steps in, that's a two-pointer, and she is hit late by Devin Merritt, who goes down hard. And Devin looks like she is in some pain. Yeah, I believe she landed on that shoulder kind of wrong. Well, the Dukes are without Maddie Green today. She is on the bench. And uh, the Dukes have a couple of others who have uh, yet to really get back into the groove. We have not seen Brianna Tensley, and who sh she practiced yesterday, redshirt sophomore. Of course, she's a transfer from Virginia, so she's not eligible yes. at this stage. Uh, sorry about my little mishap there but uh, yeah so she's not eligible but she's uh, down there at the end of the bench and of course uh, Casey Irvin a 6'1 sophomore from Penn Laird Virginia went to Spotswood father Daryl pitcher in the bigs was a closer for the Boston Red Sox and Merritt helped up look at uh, the crowd Jalen Carradine will go back in for JMU with Merritt being tended to by Jessica Colburn on the bench. And a free throw, two shots coming from Alyssa Alston, a two, five, three out of four thus far this season. Seven points for Alston who Eight, so a good first half. Hits them both. Kind of whispers something to herself before she shot. <laughs> Whatever it takes to keep your fo focus, zone it in, motivate you. Everybody has their little quirks. I have plenty of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was superstitious a lot when I was an athlete. Smalls. Try to get it out, but that was baited as England, she saw Smalls getting double teaming for the pass to go to Cooper Williams. And Smalls throws it away once again. So back-to-back -back turnovers for Kamaya. Here comes Kiki Jefferson. Yeah, the St. John's defense playing man-to-man -man is really starting to put a toll on the Dukes, moving at a faster pace, not allowing them to really make good plays and good passes. 29-25, 5.01 to go. Smalls is here as Drake brings it up, averaging three points per game, six rebounds. Alston to the top, looks down low. Here is Drake right in front of our location. Benitez on her defensively. In the keyhole, stopped Korea by Barrier. Barrier got a hand in there. Noble. And a foul is on Cooper Williams. Diving in on the foul. It's a tough foul, more of a momentum change kind of foul. 
certainly not intentional. That brings us to a media timeout as St. John's, the Red Storm leading James Madison's Dukes, 29-25, back with more of this second half action. As you're watching Jasketball, the Dukes and the Red Storm of St. John's here on Flow Sports. would like to thank its team Madison partners. They are Sprint, Sintera, and at the free throw line is Emma Nolan hits, or misses actually the first, beg your pardon. Off the back of the alley, as Caradine tracks down the rebound for JMU. 29-25, St. John's out in front. Caradine with the ball rip, gets it over to Jefferson, she surveys, now uses the dribble, flying out as Benitez tries the three and hits it. Certainly what the Dukes needed. A nice shot from the arc. Benitez, that's just her first three-pointer of the season. Again, she was out with an injury, missed all of the Maryland game, went out in the Longwood contest, and so she missed the Villanova game also. You know, she won as a junior CAA Sixth Man of the Year, and I think that's a great title for her. There's a travel called against St. John's. That's a little salt in the wound for Joe Tartamella. He wanted a travel called on the three-pointer that was made by Benitez. Sometimes we can't have everything we want. Though. No, that's, that's true. <laughs> she told me in an interview that uh, aired on the pregame show during the radio broadcast of today's game with Craig Orndorff on the JMU Sprint Broadcast Network. I said, describe, if you weren't Kiki, how would you describe Kiki? She says, annoying. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> she goes, yeah, if you're not having a good day, I'm going to annoy you until you have a good day, basically, is what her, what her concept is. She wants you to uh, enjoy what you're doing. And so her way of going about that is just kind of picking at you. She kind of coaxes a laugh, a smile, a giggle, a light moment. Sometimes we all need that. When we get too mad, we don't want to smile, but we need that friend that says, you know, I'm going to make you smile. And the shot clock violation against JMU as they end up with Cooper Williams with the ball in her hands a little ways away from the basket. So 29-28. There's Coach Joe. And hang on, we've got a stoppage of play. Looks like Alston is a little woozy over there. Uh, she may have uh, gotten ill, it appears. When you're running back and forth, you know, sometimes it definitely can't happen. Well, she has been spending a lot of energy, certainly, out on the floor. Yeah, she has, and she's a very scrappy player, so I think she does a lot of behind-the-scenes work as well when she doesn't have the ball. Yep, so she uh, did get a little ill. And see how quiet the crowd's getting? This is what I meant. Right? Today. You know, they just, <laughs> everybody's, I see some yawns. Oh, yeah, all this has happened yeah. out here. I got a lot to take care of when I get a little bit of time in December, maybe. So here's England. Shot clock is at nine, so let's mark that for you. Back in the lineup is Bailey. Shot clock to two. Here's the pass underneath. And bats it away, and she comes up with a loose basketball. It's going to end up as a shot clock violation. Either way, and splashing it down. Five, hits her second tray. She has 10. And the Dukes recapture the lead on that three-pointer from Benitez. Although you can't replace Madison Green, Benitez has been doing a very good job filling in an empty spot where a player could be. And that's over the out. Williams count that basket for KB as she has six. Five, a 50% shooter from the field. has the three field goals in today's matchup. It's down low to Barrier. Barrier trying to back it down against three Red Storm players, and the Red Storm comes away with it. Drive in the paint. That looked like contact out of Barrier. And again, the hustle with St. John's. They just keep the ball alive, not necessarily tapping it up, but tapping it out and around. They're making the right plays and the right passes to really make this offense work. Tied at 31. Shot clock down to seven. Three-point bomb launched, and down it goes. And that's her first. That's actually her first tray of the season. She doesn't take many three-pointers. She may have been influenced by the pep band that was counting it down a little early. Yes. 
can always count on the pet band to have a little more pressure. Ball tapped into the hands of the Red Storm. Driving is Korea, the kick out. Back it goes, England another three-pointer. It does not fall, rebound on the floor. Last touch by the Dukes, Kamaya Smalls was the last to have a finger on it. And Unique Drake comes back in out of Columbia. South Carolina went to Westwood. She came in for Hoppy, who still does have two fouls. You have to make sure she's still valuable in the second half. St. John's with victories over St. Bonaventure. It was the Battle of the Saints early, and that was uh, out in Western New York, 68-56, and most recently beat the Leopards of Lafayette, 76-44. In the corner, that's taking the shot Kiki was Brianna Jefferson Bellaran. Coming up with the rebound. Tracking it down, Smalls lays it up. 11 for Kamaya. As she joins uh, Benitez in double figures. They don't have Kamaya up on the uh, scoreboard for points. I think everybody's feeling the Sunday scaries. <laughs> that might be right. England. Oh, lost them. Bellaran leaves it, and it is picked. Need a little more space, and there it's back. As long as a person keeping track of possession has a good job today. Here's Benitez. Three-pointer. Nope. And an extra step. I thought that uh, Jefferson was going to launch the tray, but she elected to try to drive. So a turnover with 1.9 seconds remaining. I think a lot of his confidence will come with more time spent on the floor. Three-pointer launched. Backboard connected, but that's all that they hit. 34-33, the Dukes down by one. In a first half, it saw multiple lead changes, runs by both teams. The game was tied 35 times. That can't be right. Ah, this isn't right. So there's no lead changes. No there lead were plenty. Changes. There were plenty of lead changes. All right, so we're going to go to St. John's begins the second half with possession. Hoppy and Alston is back out there. Took a little Pepto-Bismol and she's good to go. <laughs> and that was, uh, they didn't pay for that. Offensive rebound, back up and in. It's Bailey back of the ball game. Bailey makes it a three-point spread. Here comes Smalls into the front court with Alston on her hip. And barrier that is called for travel. See the Red Storm is going to stick with that man-to-man -man defense, but it's been working for them in the first half. That's 15 turnovers against the Dukes, and that has produced 15 points off those. Turn off that one yet, but certainly pending. Well, turnovers have certainly started to become a little bit of a precautionary thing, especially against Maryland in the last two minutes, helping them lose the lead yeah, against that, Maryland. That pressure is ultimately in it. Three-pointer from Hoppy in the right corner, and that opens up a six-point spread. And that is uh, the largest run for St. John's, a six-point spread. The Dukes get a clank off the three-point. Alston to England. Dukes need a defensive stop here. Alston is fouled on a passing by of Alexi Barrier. Looks like she may have just hit the tip of her hand on that follow through. And the officials don't even know who the culprit was. And that ends up as three for Alston. Barrier has her second for number one here in this third quarter. Alston flips it up and it rims the cup and comes on back out. The strike, two out of three at the free throw line. She'll get another chance here on the foul. As she was out. And she goes two out of three during this possession. Ten points as she joins Hoppy in double figures with 13. Hoppy averaging 17. Here's Jefferson drives, kicks out right side, and the drive for Benitez takes a nice shot. The last touch by the Dukes. 
I like the aggression coming from Benita is following her own shot and picking up her own rebound. The blast touched it, so she was hoping the call would go JMU's way. It does not as the eight-point lead opens up. It's the largest lead of ball game for St. John's and matches the largest for JMU. Now it's up to 11 as Hoppy hits a tray. That's her second of the period, and it is 44-33. The Dukes find themselves in a hole early in the second half. And Sean O'Regan and the Dukes want to take a timeout to discuss it. We'll take a timeout as well. Damn you, yet. Yeah. Rentals manages them all because it's not just a rental, it's home. Back to the action here at the JMU Convocation Center. Lexi Barrier and the Dukes with the basketball after a timeout. Barrier drives, can't get it to fall. Rebound tied up. Possession arrow does favor the home team. There's Coach Sean O'Regan, his team down by 11 as the Storm has scored the first 10 to start. They're going to reset it to 30. On the uh, possession, the tied up possession. Here's Benitez, drops it off. Cooper Williams gets Storm members flying in the air and she eventually Scores for the Dukes, and that stops the 10-0 run for St. John's. The Dukes need to take advantage of going down deep into the paint and driving. England elevates, comes up shy, rebound. for. Here comes the pass right in front of us, Benitez. I thought it was coming to you, Allie. A little bit. I sat back. You did. <laughs> That's good, because Benitez flew in and got it. Here's the drive. Smalls, and she gets contact. Can't finish the play. It's a third on Hoppy, actually. That is a big foul. Third foul comes with 7.38 to go in the third period. As she leads all scorers with 16. She's hit a couple of trays here in the second half. Smalls goes. Kamai out of Philadelphia hits the first one. 5'10", senior. That gives her a dozen points. An 87% free throw shooter this season. Something also to notice is that Kamai is She's very impressive. That is, yeah, that, yeah, and we talked about that before the game began, knowing that she was going to be a primary ball handler with Maddie Green out today. And Maddie played a really good floor game against Maryland. Yes, she did. That was one of my post-game questions of Coach O'Regan. And he put it up there among one of her better, and I was really pleased with the way she managed things. So essentially, she deserved a break today. Uh, yes, yes. She did spend a lot of energy. Shot clock is down to seven. England kicks it out. Three-pointer off the iron rebound. And that is just thrown up in the general vicinity. And Korea finds the fun as it trickles on down and into the cylinder, 46-37. Barrier, fadeaway. Nice-looking shot, but a little too strong. Jefferson rebound, tries to go up with power, ball on the floor, another jump ball, and the possession arrow this time goes to the visitors. Kiki Jefferson going up against two Red Storm. It's a bold move for the true freshman. We got a banged up player on the floor, that's KB. Looks like her left arm is hurting a bit. They're gonna try to help her up. She gets a little assistance from her teammates. Let's watch it here. There's just a lot of bodies going for the basketball. You can appreciate the hustle and determination for both. Yeah, her arm got wrapped up in there. It's hard not to for something going on. Yeah. That looked like a foul actually on the Red Storm as Jefferson was trying to go through the, the crew. They, I think they missed that one. The drive, the kick out. Alston, Korea, three-pointer. Another one hit by the Red Storm. That's her first three-pointer. The Red Storm shooting 53%. The Dukes try to answer the other end. Can't get it to fall. Another jump ball, and at this time, the possession error is in JMU's favor. That's been really making a difference this half, is that seeing Kayla Cooper-Williams and Lexi Barrier down here and fighting for that rebound. Red Storm, Alley. Six out of 13 from the floor, 46%. The Dukes are two out of nine. Right now, that's one of the big factors 
separating these two teams. 100% it is. And roll to freshman Kiki Jefferson. That's her second field goal to go with a couple of free throws. She has six. It's a 10-point lead for the Red Storm. Series fifth all-time meeting between the two, and JMU has two wins, so does the Red Storm. And a drive. Jefferson. Jefferson's heating up a little bit. Seeing Devin Merritt back in the game in the paint. That's a good sign as she went out with a shoulder injury a little while ago. Benitez out there defending against KB. Oh, make that English. Here's the drive. And trying another crazy shot, Korea. I guess she figured if it worked earlier, she can try it again. But contact is made. Jefferson has her second personal foul. Second team foul in the third, and Jay Carradine comes back in. 5'10", sophomore, strong, Abingdon, Maryland. Correa at the line. Freshman misses on the free throw attempt. She has seven points, so she's right on track with her season. Gets the second to play. Does the rookie. She is up to eight. Pressure. Somewhat applied. Smalls. Ends up one-on-one. -on -one, passing out right wing. Benitez drives. Takes the shot. Rebound. It's Barrier, and she is fouled going up. As Give some credit also on that opportunity for Barrier because of where Merritt was positioned below the block. Yeah, Merritt definitely saw a barrier in her peripheral to be able to uh, Tapped it out to her. Foul is whistled against Emma Nolan. One of two Nolans on this squad. A little too much heat on that one. Bounces off the back rim. She hit the two that seconds to go against Maryland. Uh, she was Lexi. She's ha she's up to seven points, and it's an eight-point spread. Halfway through the third period, England. Nolan, back out to England. Thirteen on the shot clock. Alston goes through a bunch of traffic, flips it up, rebound for Kamaya Smalls. Duke's on the run. Smalls hesitates. And rolls it in. Kamaya Smalls taking charge. And a foul called against England after the fact. That was curious. That was, in essence, a dead ball foul before the ball went back in. I remember learning about that in your class. Well, that's a little different. But she retired. She was the longest tenured SID with women's bat one women's basketball program in the country at that time. It's quite the accolade. And uh, certainly enjoyed working with her. She had great notes and kept up with a lot of numbers. And a lot of that has been passed on to the younger generation. And a foul called against the Red Storm trying to drive in. England to Merritt with a charge. It's her second foul. Turnover number 14. There have been 30 turnovers in the contest. Wow. Barrier hangs on to the dribble. Caradine. Three-pointer launched by number three. Off the iron, no good. Rebound. Merritt, strong move, and she'll draw contact. Good for Merritt. Going up aggressive. On number 41. So Emma Nolan from Valparaiso, Indiana, home of Valpo. Very nice. School, Valpo <laughs> University. <laughs> Kiki Jefferson back in the lineup. The Duff. Crusaders of Valparaiso. That's from the free throw line. 83%. She comes up a little shy on that one. Merritt out of Reading, PA, Burks Catholic. Dukes uh, get a lot from the Keystone State. Merritt makes the adjustment and hits. 
Dukes have pulled to within five. They trailed by as many as a dozen. Nolan goes back to the bench. England comes across the timeline, 25 seconds on the shot clock. England takes it back. Benitez defending her. Alston will drive around Merritt, loses the handle, Merritt. Smalls crosses over to Benitez, gets a screen. Nothing doing there, it got tips. But Smalls collects it. Smalls loses the handle herself. She'll track it back, 15 seconds. Smalls all the way, can't get it, follows it up and scores it. 17 points for Smalls. That's one shy of what she finished with against the Red Storm last year. The Dukes are within a tray. England tried to cross over against Benitez. Three pointer, nothing but the bottom of the net for Drake. That pointer she's hit this year. Good time to hit it. Yep, that opens up the lead back to six. Benitez trying to break down England. And she is bumped. Red Storm, seven out of 14 on three-pointers. Hey, a Red Storm red hot from the outside. That will be England's third foul as well. So England's third comes with 2.35 to go in the third quarter. Hoppy has been on the bench for a while. She's not out there now, is she? Nope. She picked up her third foul at the 7.36 mark. Back comes in Nolan. She tries to provide some more minutes here as Coach Artemella in his eighth season trying to manage his bench with the foul situation. Benitez, she's at rim around and come on out. Benitez, redshirt senior, Jersey City, New Jersey. Free throw with 11. Contact and score the basketball as Drake comes through with a bucket. Kayla Cooper Williams whistled for the second time today. That's a team foul. What a nice drive for Drake. Drake shot a little bit, allowing Kayla Cooper Williams to keep her hand straight up and come back down on the ball. That's hard off down for Caradine. That's her third. Smalls runs into a lot of traffic. Jefferson spins. And it comes back out. This is Benitez. Jefferson will drive, leaves it off for Cooper Williams. That, that is called a foul. Okay, I wasn't sure if he was going to call a foul, foul or a jump yeah. ball, to be honest with you. So the foul is on off. Alston has her second. Cooper Williams goes to the free throw line. If Barrier comes in. She's going to give Smalls a breather with 2.05 to go in the third. Coach O'Regan uh, giving a chat Benitez during the stoppage of play also. Benitez already in the game. And Cooper Williams off the right of the rim. And that one makes it. That's her only tried four this year. Gives her five points. And that goes with as many rebounds. Korea. And that's knocked away Benitez. 156 to play here in the third. Dukes down by six. Drake will inbound down the far end on the side court. Inbound to Nolan it goes. Nolan, that's a two-pointer. Rattles in and out. The Dukes the rebound. It comes out to Jefferson. She has her seven four. That's right at her season average. Jefferson will drive and pop. See the freshman guard take charge as Kamaya Smalls is cheering her on from the bench. 
And a block by Cooper Williams. They get her on the follow through. She got all ball initially, but on the follow through, she does make the contact. So that's her third with 1.31 to go in the third quarter. So she'll step out. Drake goes to the strike. That's eight for Drake. And the rookie hits another. She's up to nine. And back to a six-point spread, that is, favoring St. John's. Ball was kicked. I think it was kicked by Alston. They're saying, no, it was Barrier. From the angle we were sitting at, it was hard, hard for me to see. It was right here. Well, we, we do have it probably on replay. Maybe we'll get a chance to take a peek at it. It was right in front of Coach O'Regan. But it ends up as a turnover for JMU, and that is the 17th against the Dukes. Shot clock at 10. Alston drives, keyhole, leaves it out, three-pointer Nolan. And a nine. Nolan has missed her last couple of shots. Jefferson will drive with authority, and she'll draw contact from Nolan again. That is three on the freshman. Let's, let's go back. We'll see just what the tape will reveal here, the video. Oh, yeah, no question. Yeah. Yep. Good call. No question. Jefferson. Dukes are leaving some points at the free throw line. Jefferson did earn her first CAA Rookie of the Week accolade last week, I believe, on yes. the 11th. 11 out of 16, the Dukes at the free throw line. Gets the favorable sub. Jefferson. Got it for eight. That's nine for Jefferson. I was off a bucket. And three second called against St. John's. It's the third three second call we've had tonight between the two teams. Smalls comes back in with 36.9 remaining in the third. The Red Storm still has Hoppy sitting on the bench due to three fouls. Comes into Smalls. On her hip is Alston. Barrier. Needs some help. Gets it out to Smalls again. Shot clock is still in effect on this possession. About a five, six second differential. Smalls eyeing the clock. Here comes the screen from Merritt. Smalls lost the handle. Eight seconds on the turnover. St. John's will get the basketball with that much time left and leading it by five. Alston goes out. England comes in. England streaks down the floor. Top, it's Hoppy that comes back in. That's a three-point try and it's off the back of the iron good try for hoppy as she comes in with the three fouls to close out the third quarter the dukes were down by one at the break got down by as many as 12 early in the second half but they've trimmed that down to five but they're still trying to get ahead of this storm <laughs> as the uh, dukes get a double overtime win over uncw nicholas moore with a shot from outside the box Allie tells me and the Dukes win 1-0 at UNCW, back-to-back -back CA titles for Paul Zazinski and the men's soccer Dukes, and they are bound to the NCAA tournament once again. And if you just saw my tweet about women's soccer, <laughs> that was a Freudian slip there. It's been a long week for all of us. <laughs> and it comes out on the miss. Had a women's soccer score, JMU trailing St. John's 57-52. <laughs> As small as closes a gap in women's <laughs> soccer. No, this is basketball, isn't it? 
19. So how about that, uh, Nicholas Moore, senior, one of many seniors for the Dukes. See if they have a magical run like they did last year. Up and under, no good. Dukes are within a possession. And here's Barrier streaking down the floor, up and scoring it from Tamaya Smalls out to Barrier. Finding the open man all the way down the court. It's a one point game. So JMU in football winning on Saturday, the outright title. They had already clinched a share going into yesterday's game, but that means that nobody else can share it with them. They're very stingy that way. <laughs> and of course, men's soccer with a win today. And that's partially deflected, looked by Cooper Williams. And another defensive rebound for the Dukes. Barrier in the corner. Wasn't quite open. She's going to try to drive into the paint. Takes the short shot. No good. Rebound. And a foul on Jefferson going over the back. Once again, just a little too much momentum. Ending up falling over Hoppy. Third personal foul on Jefferson. So she has three. Cooper Williams has three. Barrier with two. Those are the ones of concern for JMU. England has three. Hoppy with three and Nolan with three. Hoppy still on the bench. Nope, she is out there now, beg your pardon. Drake has had a good game. Hoppy stops, ball knocked away, and that goes off of Drake after deflected by Kamaya Smalls. Sean O'Regan. Well, the Dukes they gave up a, a big lead against Wednesday night. Maybe they're the ones to make the comeback today. Although I'm sure Coach O'Regan would rather not be down by yes. a dozen. <laughs> Why add the stress? You don't need it. From the Philadelphia Playgrounds to the Convocation Center lays it in, and the Dukes have the lead 58-57. Waking up the Convocation Center a little bit is Smalls. And a technical foul called against Smalls for touching the basketball. And she uh, knocked it out of her hand. Coach O'Regan wondering why it was with Dutch. I think the official was looking at it from what I saw there. But missing is Hoppy on the free throw. Second one is good. Coach O'Regan looking to Smalls while she was making those free throws and pointing to his head saying, just be smarter Smart. about it. Yep. But you get so wrapped up in the game sometimes, your emotions just like excessively celebrate. Or pulling off your helmet <laughs> and hitting the opponent <laughs> with it. <laughs> Drive by Hoppy. Raridon, she's been very good underneath the defensive end. I told you she was a strong sophomore. Absolutely. I mean, physically very strong. Ball knocked away by Hoppy. She did. Jefferson has to lay off, and Hoppy travels and loses. That, she is a freshman. That was a tremendous, tremendous play for Jefferson, knowing she's got three fouls. And she was there just to create a little turn, and it got Hoppy all out of sorts. 100%. If I have six foot one running towards me, I'm going to be a little bit scared too. That's now, all she needs. Foul is on the floor. I'm going to sit back from this uh, table a little bit here because this is going to get, get a little dicey down the stretch. <laughs> Foul was called on the floor, and that is against Alston. That's her third. Caradine inbounds. It comes to Jefferson. Back to Caradine. She'll drive, try to scoop up a contest there defensively. Down the floor. Back goes the Red Storm. Laying it up and in, the quasi Euro step, we'll say. She only made it halfway across the Atlantic, but it still scored. Dukes get it across the timeline. Caradine. Benitez, three pointer. Yes! Benitez has 14. The Dukes recapture the lead 61 60. And timeout on the floor. I think we need to take one ourselves. <laughs> JMU up 61-60 on the Benitez three-pointer. Gives her 14 for the night, for the afternoon, and 21 for Kamaya Smalls. 
Alston works, gets tripped up in the lane. And this is an unfortunate foul against. Are they calling it? They're calling it on Jefferson, so that is the fourth against Kiki. It comes with 6.31 to go. And with that, Carradine. That was one of those incidental. Yeah. Uh, wrong place at the wrong time yep. kind of things. Shot clock is at 20 on the inbounds. England into the corner. Hoppy tries to spin around Lexi Barrier, and it's knocked out of bounds. Anticipated by Kamaya Small. 6.24 to go. Inbounds it. Hoppy back to Korea. That's a design play, and it comes up shy. Rebound, Lexi Barrier. Dukes about rebounded St. John's 34 to 21, and that has been a big point of JMU coming back to this contest. Well, courtesy to freshman Kiki Jefferson having a lot of those. Jefferson and uh, give Caradine a lot of those also. Caradine with five boards, and I think all of them have been at the defensive end. Duke had many second chance opportunities. And that's off the screen. Rebound fought for. As misses the bank shot. Where to go with it? Korea launches it. That's off the mark. And nobody in red underneath the. It's a 36 22 spread in rebounding for the Dukes. We didn't get a stat sheet at halftime, did we, Sock? I can't recall what it was at the break. I think it was, I don't remember. But I'm sure it has opened up quite a bit this half. Smalls, wow. A miracle that she got the pass off. And we got bodies fly flying into bodies and cameras and <laughs> cheer <laughs> cheerleaders taking hits. <laughs> Welcome to the combo center. Watch, watch all this happen. Here's Smalls. Smalls gets hit. Alston, who's already had her troubles today. In person with a couple of cheerleading dukes. She just wanted to say hello. Meanwhile, Smalls goes back to work and she hits for 22. Smalls has been in uh, uh, above 23 times in four games this year. Yes, she has. She has averaged 20.3 points per game. And the layup power. England, she has just five, that's seven actually for England. And St. John's within one of the Dukes. Caradine to Barrier. Barrier in the paint, lays it off the rim. 11. Barrier has been essential in the paint today. Dukes up by three. Number three takes it. England, no good rebound, long rebound, tapped out. Korea tries, she just gets in there and chucks it up. Dukes getting lucky with those two misses there. One of the very rare offensive rebounds for the St. John's Red Storm in this half. And Smalls, she schools and gets to the hoop for the Dukes. 25 points for Kamaya Smalls. Well, she puts the Dukes on her back somewhat here with help from her friend, 67, 6 5 with 436 to play. As Smalls has her 21st career 20 point ball game. Off the Paradine, another rebound. That is seven for the sophomore. Barrier in traffic, <laughs> tapped out. Getting on the floor, Caradine, what a great round. Pass to Benitez, and did she step on the sideline? Yes, she did. Wow, what a fantastic play. Dylan Caradine has just matched her career high for rebound. She had eight against Longwood. Well, she's got eight here today. 
against St. John's. Unfortunately, the Dukes could not capitalize on the possession. The drive and a foul on, let's see, it's either, it's actually going against Barrier. Be her third of the afternoon. Well, right now, she can afford to give one, whereas Cooper Williams, how many does Kayla have? Kayla, I believe, has three. She does, so that keeps her still at three. Barrier has three. That's a better circumstance for the Dukes. Four, though, so she has got to play smart. Dropped in, Hoppy. Hoppy has been hampered this second half by her foul. She picked up her third, the 7.36 mark, but Coach Tartamella certainly can't afford to have her on the bench any longer. Sheen, well, she is above her season scoring average. Again, very young in the season, just the third game for St. John's this year. Duke's looking to go 2-0 against members of the Big East. Benitez, career high for Carradine, and the bucket for Carradine. The other end, the match by Drake is the act defensively, 69-66. St. John's recognizing the opportunity and taking it to the other hole. Benitez, Barrier, 16 on the shot clock. Jackie loads up, fires off the mark, long rebound. England takes the pass. England in the keyhole, tries to drive by, scoops it up, and nine points. It's a one-point lead. 240 remaining. Barrier inside, Cooper Williams spins. Powers, no, gets her own board. Up again through two defenders. Cooper Williams has seven. Three-point ball game. Around the perimeter, England looks at the shot clock. 18, still plenty on the possession. England's going to drive, tries to lay it underneath, and does so. And, Lee, and she picks up points four and five. Time out, here comes Smalls back out. She'll spell Lexi Barrier. There's Coach Joe coming down the floor. Bailey, who just scored the bucket. Duke spread the floor a little bit, the inbound contest. And so Smalls will walk it up. Two minutes to play. Jefferson here on the left wing with three foul, four fouls, that is. Smalls looking for a bit of a screen, now bounces it right side Benitez. Jefferson in the corner. Back out, Smalls. She's at the men's three-point arc. Needs to find some help. Gets it off to Carradine. Shot clock at four. Benitez splashes it her up by four. Benitez coming in clutch when needed for the Dukes. Four-point spread for James Madison as the shot clock was winding down. And the Dukes will take the basketball over. The Dukes force the Red Storm to turn the ball over, make a bad pass, and throw it out of bounds, causing their offense to be a little wobbly. High and into the stands nearly. So the Dukes with a four-point lead, two-possession lead, and the basketball as we approach the minute mark. Smalls, foul line extended, back out to Barrier, who checked right back in. Benitez, and Benitez lays it up and is blocked. The block by Bailey who gets it out. Down the floor it goes, Hoppy circles back out. England, long range three, no. Jefferson gets the ball to the hands of Smalls. 45 seconds to go. Pass to Barrier and timeout called. by JMU, Sean O'Regan doing so as he felt the Dukes needed a little bit of breathing room. Yes. Team video. Barrier, in it comes to Smalls, and she is fouled quickly. A reminder, the Dukes are not playing with their usual point guard who plays most of the minutes at point, yes, and Maddie they, Green. They don't, but Austin did just, in fact, foul out with that last one. 
That will be her fifth. That is. So Austin goes out with her fifth foul with 41 seconds to play. Duke's up by four. They could really use a bucket here. Hoppy will come over to defend the inbound. Benitez peels out, and here comes Smalls. Pass is high. Very close to the half-court mark, and Tartamello wanting the call. Here is Smalls. She'll dribble around with 12 seconds remaining on the shot clock. That's where her ball handling skills really come into play. Crowd counts down the shot clock. Smalls takes the shot, no good. Rebound, St. St. John's. All right, so St. John's had the basketball. She took one dribble, they caught and got the timeout. So they'll have the ball at the far end of the court with 21 seconds to play. once again, 42-25. Here's the big difference. Here's England, top of the circle. Bailey, Hoppy, they want it in her hands. The Dukes are all over her. Benitez, the three-pointer, Hoppy, it is good. 74, 6.7 seconds to go, and the Dukes take a timeout. They're gonna get Jefferson back in with the four fouls. They gotta draw something up to get the inbound in. First things first. Now the key here is definitely that inbounds. If you can just. The Dukes get it on the backcourt. Of course, they moved it up. I forgot. They did have the opportunity to bring it up. My bad on that. They call the timeout and bring it over half court. So a foul is called, and it is on England, her fourth. Paradigm comes back in for the Dukes, Benitez. Well, keep in mind, Benitez only really has a game and a half under her belt this season. And she gets it to tumble in. 675-73. Quiet again here at the Convocation Center. Second shot, also good. All right, so the Red Storm needs a tray to bolt out of the clouds to keep them going. With five seconds, five seconds, the inbounds comes in to England. They need a three-pointer. England tries the three at the buzzer. No good, and the ball game is over. The Dukes overcome a 12-point deficit in the third quarter as the two alums embrace at half court. This time, it's the home team. Again, winning it. Actually, the home team has won this stretch in this series. St. John's won the first two in this current contract. JMU wins the next two, and the Dukes improve to three and one. St. John suffers its first loss of the season. 76-73 is our final score. We'll step aside for a brief timeout, and we'll wrap this one up from the JMU Convocation Center. Do you own rental property but are tired of calls from tenants at all hours? Worn out by constantly searching for good tenants? Let Reiner Rentals manage your rentals so you can rest easy and maintain a profitable investment. We take away 